The holiday season is in full swing, and it's a festive atmosphere here inside the Compton Family Ice Arena, where tonight it's a reunion of a couple of old CCHA rivals as the number 16 Bowling Green Falcons visit the number five Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Welcome inside the Compton Family Ice Arena where we are just minutes away from puck drop between Bowling Green and Notre Dame. Hello everybody, alongside Jack Kaiser, Connor Klingen here with you and Jack, both of these teams off to a strong start to the season. And for Notre Dame, much of that is due to the play of their captain, Cal Burke. He brings leadership and experience to a young team. There's been a great line of captains at Notre Dame and Cal Burke fits the bill. One of the most skilled players in the Big Ten, leads the team with 14 points. The offense runs through him. The Irish will need Cal Burke to play well tonight. Cal Burke, a very skilled captain, but on the other side for Bowling Green, they have a skilled captain captain of their own in defenseman Alec Rauhauser. I mean, this guy's a stud. Head coach Ty Eichner said he's one of the best defensemen in the nation. He's great on offense at the point, but he can be physically imposing on defense too. 6'3", 215 pounds. He's one of the go-to guys for Bowling Green. Two talented captains leading a couple of talented teams. Puck drop is coming up next between Bowling Green and Notre Dame here on NBCSports.com. tells us to love both those whose opinions we share and those whose opinions it's we like reject. Like it's always, there's always a line. For they all help us in our search for truth. You get what I'm saying? Like, all we're doing is shopping. This oh, land yeah. was made for you and me.
inside. Compton Family Ice Arena about ready for puck drop. And we take a look at the goaltender for Bowling Green, Eric Dahm. He spent the last two seasons backing up Ryan Bednard, who signed an NHL contract, and he has come into his own this season. The last three Bowling Green goalies have gone on to play in the NHL. He's allowed just three goals in his last four games. Eric Dahm is a very hot goaltender right now for Bowling Green. And on the other side for Notre Dame, Cale Morris, always one of the best goaltenders in the country. Two seasons ago, won the Mike Richter Award as the best goaltender in college hockey. Semifinalist last year has a 5-2-2 two two record this season. Uh, 2.4 goals allowed average. Cale Morris, he's going to bring it every night. You have to beat him upstairs. He's so good post to post, East and West. Well, we talked about Eric Dopp sitting behind an NHL goaltender. Cale Morris learned from Cal Peterson. So for both of these programs, a legacy of great goaltending. And tonight, a matchup of two teams that haven't met since 2013. But back in the day, these two programs were fierce rivals in the CCHA. They were, and I think these two are really fired up to get back at it today. Head coach Ty Eichner said, we're not going to need any new Rockney pump-up speech to get ready for this one. That's the type of atmosphere we have today. They certainly won't. It should be a good one. And we are underway from Compton Family Ice Arena here in South Bend. Notre Dame with the second line out there to start tonight. With Graham Slager, Jake Pivanka, and Alex Steves. Bowling Green starting with the top line of Brandon Cruz, Connor Ford, and Alex Barber. Quick shot is wide. TJ Lloyd keeps the zone for the Falcons. In behind with Barber, working on the backhand from the faceoff dot. That shot was blocked by Pivanka. And the Irish will play it back in behind Gil Morris. Here's Steves. Stops in his tracks, plays it back behind the net. As the Irish get a change. This one down the ice, and it does go far enough for icing, so Notre Dame will get a face-off in the defensive zone for Bowling Green as we take a look at first-year head coach Ty Eigner. He spent nine seasons as an assistant for Chris Bergeron, and he said it's a process becoming a head coach, but he's also very comfortable at Bowling Green. Yeah, he played back th uh, there back in the day, and he's used to the system, but he has to take on a leadership role. That's new for him, and he's done a great job so far this year. And on the other side for Notre Dame, Jeff Jackson with so much experience, a Hall of Fame coach for the Irish. Here's Stastny bringing it over the blue line for Notre Dame. Played wide, but the Irish keep the zone with Clerman. It's a young group of defensemen for Notre Dame, but Coach Jackson likes the growth that he's seen from them lately. Lieberman keeps the zone and dumps it down into the corner where Cam Morrison plays it in behind. Now Michael Graham working. Graham in the corner. Tried for Janicki. But Bowling Green will take over possession as they skate into the neutral zone with Cameron Wright. It's important for Bowling Green to get off to a good start tonight. Notre Dame being outscored in the first period. Irish have consistently gotten off to slow starts. Janicki, the freshman, rings it around. Irish keep it at the blue line. That shot deflected away by Dom. Here's Tyson with a look in close. But the save is made by Dopp. A good look for Colin Tyson out in front, but Eric Dopp stands tall. And then an icing there for Bowling Green. He just wiggled his way in front and had a great look at it. Played along the boards, and then it squirts in front of the net. And Tyson almost comes up with it left side, just a bit wide. And that's one there that Tyson maybe wanted to elevate there above that pad for Dopp. But Dom able to keep the Irish off the board here early. These two teams playing a home and home. They'll play tomorrow night in Bowling Green. It's a tough stretch for Notre Dame. Here's Dello with a shot, but that's snared by Dom. As we take a look at Notre Dame head coach Jeff Jackson in his 15th season. 
Of course, he's taken Notre Dame to two national title games, over 500 career wins, second among Division I coaches. He's obviously built a powerhouse here at Notre Dame, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. When you have a consistency in your culture like Jeff Jackson has built, it's hard not to win. Here's Crawford trying to chase it down behind. Crawford scored a game winner for the Irish against Ohio State in overtime back on November 8th. Played back to the blue line, blocked away and an opportunity for a breakaway. Lincoln held in on Morris. He goes to the backhand and that one squirts in for a goal. Bowling Green gets on the board just over three minutes into this one. A breakaway opportunity early on for the Falcons, and they convert. That's exactly what they needed. Early pressure on Notre Dame. Again, the Irish off to slow starts in that breakaway. An absolute opportunity handed to the Falcons, and what a finish from Bowling Green and Casey Lincoln held. He just went to the five hole there, and Morris unable to make the save, so an early lead for the Falcons. Bowling Green team coming in at eight and five on the season. Here's Barber, and that shot deflected. Ford with another chance. And that was blocked away. Colin into the slot, tried to find Ford. And the Falcons will attempt to play it back to the corner, but it's taken away by Cal Burke. Falcons with it in the neutral zone, and they'll dump it down to get a change. This top line for Notre Dame has so much experience and so much firepower. Here's O'Leary out in front, goes to the backhand, but it's wide. Ellickson keeps it in. O'Leary tried to find the slot there. Missed the stick of Graham Slaggard. O'Leary is one of those guys on the top line with that experience and scoring power, leading Notre Dame in goals this year. Almost tied it up. And O'Leary has 30 points in his last 30 games after he only had 18 points in the first 96 games of his career. Bowling Green with a takeaway in the neutral zone. Freddie Letourneau tried to chase it down, but the Irish Gain possession. It's been a wide open game so far. We already saw Bowling Green score on the breakaway from Casey Lincoln help. Notre Dame's been applying most of the offensive pressure. Bowling Green has had it here and there. But that breakaway is the difference right now. And on the road, you need those opportunities to go your way. And Lincoln Hell was able to capitalize. Well, you mentioned, Jack, this is a Notre Dame team that's gotten off to some slow starts this season. They've had to rely on coming back. They have six comeback wins. And here's another shot from in close from Cameron Wright. But Cale Morris makes this save. Casey Lincoln held with the breakaway goal. Bowling Green leads it one to nothing. Got anything so far? No. You're doing awesome. Um, you can do. <clears throat> I didn't want to step on your toes when O'Leary was getting really close, oh, yeah. so I had to cut myself <laughs> off. That's that's all right. I mean, that's going to happen just because yeah, it goes all over. It's just so, yeah, exactly. Back inside the Compton Family Ice Arena as you get a look at Casey Lincoln held 
who scored the goal for Bowling Green to give them the lead. Just his second goal of the season, but he showed a lot of skill on the breakaway. Yeah, his first goal since the second game of the year, so it's been a long time coming for Casey Lincoln held. But he provides experience in a very young team. We talked about that with Cal Burke in Notre Dame. Lincoln held one of those senior forwards for the Falcons. Bowling Green came away with the win on the faceoff. Lincoln Held plays it in behind. Now back to the blue line for Colin. Colin evades the stick of Tyson, goes to the backhand. Now a rip from Theo Cherdis. That got deflected in front. And Notre Dame will bring it into the neutral zone with Janicki. That's a good shot for Theo Cherdis, though, and Bowling Green on the one-timer. They're just trying to put pressure, put shots on Kale Morris early. They've done a good job of that thus far. Here's Cal Burke over for O'Leary, working on the right side. Falcons ring it around the boards. is dumped back into the Notre Dame zone. Here's Cruz with a backhanded shot. That got deflected wide. Brandon Cruz tried to play it in front, but the Irish with the takeaway. Cal Burke into the zone. Out of the stick of Dello, but he lost the puck. Brandon Cruz tried to bring it into the Irish zone, lost the puck. Cruz, a fifth round pick of the Vegas Golden Knights back in 2018. Cruz has been dynamite passing this year for Bowling Green, leading the team in assists, and he almost came up with one. Doherty out in front. That was blocked away, the shot from Taylor Schneider. Bowling Green making it difficult for the Irish to get into their defensive zone. Here's Stastny. Plays for Pavanka. The shot from the slot was blocked. Dopp plays that away with his stick. This is dumped down to the other end of the ice. That will go far enough for icing. And Jack, we take another look at this block that was made by Clerman. And Nate Clerman, one of the top plus minuses in the NCAA. You just have to commit your body to that block fully. And Clerman's been solid as an underclassman defenseman this season. He's made plays like that all year for Notre Dame. And that's led to a good non-conference start. Coach Jackson really likes the physicality from Clerman this year. Brings a different element to the Irish defensively. Ellickson for the one-timer from Lieberman. And now the Falcons will skate with it in the neutral zone. Busser had it blocked by Tyson. Wasn't able to gain possession, though. Now a chance right out in front, but Cale Morris is on it. Another close look for Bowling Green. There's been turnovers from Notre Dame in the neutral zone. A poke away right there, and it sets up a beautiful opportunity right in front of the net, but Morris just absorbs that shot right in the middle. Again, Morris is really solid post to post. One squirted through the five hole earlier, but more times than not, you're going to have to go up on Kale Morris. Cameron Wright with a great look out there in front. He had four goals in the season opener for Bowling Green against Miami, Ohio. And what an interesting game that was for the Falcons taking on their former head coach and Chris Bergeron. Neither coach wanted to coach that game, that's for sure. But they, re they were excited about it nonetheless. And just the, the sense when they were talking pregame was, Let's just get this over with and 
and, and go about our business, but a, a cool moment nonetheless in the season opener. Uh, Coach Eigner and Coach Bergeron, very close friends. Obviously, they spent nine years working together, and so a bit of an awkward moment to begin the season, but I think Coach Bergeron has to be proud of where Coach Eigner has this program going in his first season. Jesse Lansell is brought down. And a whistle here. Well, we take another look. It's pretty clear that you see Alex Barber with a hook. Yeah, Barber just reaches around, recognizing the opportunity for Notre Dame. But this is where Notre Dame can capitalize. They're really solid on power play chances. They're also pretty good on the penalty kill, so penalties today, it actually goes down as a trip on Barber. Penalties today could really favor the Irish. Notre Dame 13th in the country on the power play, just over 24%. O'Leary wins the faceoff back for Lieberman with a shot from the point. Pad save made by Dopp. Battle for the puck down in the corner. Irish keep it in with Lieberman. And that pass goes past the blue line back into the neutral zone. So the Irish will have to reset things. Lieberman skates in, nearly had Burke in front, but he wasn't quite able to corral that puck. Either Lieberman or Burke, just, you're right, Connor, they just couldn't quite corral it, or that would have been a great chance in front of net. Here's Burke from the left side, back to the point with Lieberman. Lieberman out in front, Morrison had a shot, but it's wide. Irish keep it with Lieberman. Now O'Leary spinning his way in the corner. Irish with just over a minute on the power play. It's deflected and it's in. Notre Dame ties it up off the deflection on the power play goal. They have been so strong on the power play this season. And they tie this one up at one. So here's Lieberman, he just throws it out in front and then there's a deflection and it looked like standing right in front of net for Notre Dame was Cam Morrison. Cam Morrison with a perfect screen there for the Irish. He'll get credit for the goal and Notre Dame has tied it up in what has been a back and forth first period so far. That's what you got to do on the power play, just throw pucks at net. Notre Dame had two good looks before that. They get the third one to go with the Morrison screen. Both of Notre Dame's goals in their last match off power plays. And they pick up one of the first here. Now for Notre Dame on the power play, that's exactly what you want. Get a body in front of Eric Dopp, and Cam Morrison did just that. Got his stick on it to tie it up. Alex Steves skating with speed. T.J. Lloyd keeps the zone for the Falcons, has his shot blocked, and it's back into the neutral zone for Bowling Green. For Cam Morrison, that's his third goal of the season. He now has 12 points on the year. And he knows how to come up with goals when his team needs them most. Last year, Big Ten All-Tournament team had the game winner against Penn State and the game-winning goal in the regional as well. Definitely one of the leaders for this team. Bowling Green keeps it in with Prags, and he plays it back in behind Cal Morris. Dumped down to the other end of the ice. And the Falcons will get a change here. Cross ice pass for Stastny. Angles it off the boards. Tyson tried to get a stick on it in behind, was unable to. Here come the Falcons the other way with Barber off the backhand. His pass goes wide. Tyson plays it back into the neutral zone. And a whistle here. 
That will bring us to a break. Notre Dame tying it up on the deflection by Cam Morrison. Irish and Bowling Green nodded at one. Anything for me? No. No. I, uh, Tony just qu quoted my tweet and said we're doing a great job, so I'll take okay. that. <laughs> Is uh, praise from Tony hard to come by or no? No, I don't. I we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll take it. Back inside the Compton Family Ice Arena. And Jack, Notre Dame has been so strong in the power play all year. Right here, Lieberman with the shot and then deflected by Morrison right out in front, a perfect screen. Yeah, a couple of games, uh, a couple of power play goals last game against Michigan State. They pick up right where they left off. Morrison just trying to obstruct the vision of Dobb. He ends up deflecting it in, but it starts with Lieberman throwing a long shot from the point right of the net. And fortunately for Lieberman and the Irish, it went right off Morrison's leg and uh, into the back of the net. An offside here, so a face-off just outside the defensive zone for Bowling Green. For Notre Dame, that is their ninth power play goal of the season. The power play is really what Notre Dame had to rely on in their series against Michigan State. Here's Morrison. Notre Dame did not score a five-on-five -five goal in that two-game series. Yeah, their one goal in the, in the first ended up coming from the power play, or rather a six on five, and then two power play goals in the second, so they're, just, they're gonna have to make some adjustments in five on five, but the power play right now is uh, clicking on all cylinders. Here's Clerman with some speed for Morrison. Morrison just left it wide. And now perhaps an opportunity for the Falcons coming the other way. Doherty out in front. Morris with the save. Another chance for Doherty, and it's snared by Cale Morris. Decent chance for Bowling Green, but Notre Dame had a good chance on the other end. Here comes Morrison wide. It was a bad angle for him. Just tried to throw it in front of, in front of the net, see what would happen. But a tough angle there for Morrison. Oh, we've already seen Cam Morrison score one goal tonight. He had a good look there, but a great sequence right there from Cale Morris. Yeah, Mor Notre Dame needs Morris to make plays like that throughout tonight because we've already seen the pressure Bowling Green can bring early on in the first period. Cale Morris is going to have to play big tonight, and we all knew that. Falcons will bring it into the Irish defensive zone with Johnson, but now a turnover for the Irish. Chance for a two-on-one. Slaggard dishes over for Steves. Another opportunity from Slaggard goes in behind. Now Hellickson's shot is deflected. Hand pass to the point. Dello with a shot. In some traffic in front, and Bowling Green will dump it down the other way. Now an opportunity for the Irish with Steves. Tried to play back for Pavanka. Now Stastny on the backhand. And the Irish almost caught Bowling Green in a line change there. Looked like it was shaping up to be a real chance. Just a misplay up front. And we've seen some good looks for both teams in the past couple of minutes. The offense, I mean, there's been no short of it here in the first period. Both sides getting a lot of shots. Eric Dopp has faced 11 tonight, allowed just one. And he's been pretty much dynamite the last four games. So it's difficult right now to score on Eric Dopp. Good news for the Irish as they got one early. Here's Colin with a shot that gets blocked. Nice effort there by Colin Tyson.
Letourneau along the boards. Out of the stick of Lieberman for Notre Dame. But now a shot from the slot from right, and that one is blocked. They're not only seeing the defensemen, but also the forwards for Notre Dame making some key blocks defensively. This shot goes wide. Lieberman tries to loft it high, and this goes on to the bench for Notre Dame. It was deflected. It's been a fast-paced game so far. Notre Dame and Bowling Green nodded at one. Back inside the Compton Family Ice Arena, and that has been a place that's been very friendly to this Notre Dame team this season. 6-0 here at home, and going back to last season, they've won their last 10 home games. It's so hard to be a road team coming into Compton Family Ice Arena, and that's why it was important for Bowling Green to get an early go. Early goal, stem the tide, and force Notre Dame to play from behind, take the crowd of it a little bit, out of it a little bit. Bowling Green's done a good job of that so far. We're tied at one, but the Falcons are still applying pressure in the Notre Dame zone quite a bit. Lansdell with the backhand, looking in behind for Cam Burke. And this puck got deflected into the Bowling Green bench. So another whistle here with about four and a half minutes to play in this first period. This Notre Dame team hasn't been home in a while. Their last two series on the road in the Big Ten at Wisconsin, then at Michigan State. A tough stretch for Notre Dame, and this is the beginning of another tough stretch of eight games. You have six non-conference games, and then also a two-game set against Penn State. That's the reality of, of being at the level that Notre Dame is in a program. You're going to play elite non-conference opponents, and then you're playing in the Big Ten, so you're going to see a good opponent almost every night. Here's Cal Burke up the left side. Burke out in front. And that puck is slapped away. Irish able to keep it in the zone, though, with Hellickson. Now O'Leary from near the faceoff dot. That's a pad save by Dopp. Hellickson plays it down into the corner. O'Leary trying to chase it down. Took a hit there from Mussert. Dopp nearly had it for a moment. Now Bowling Green looking to move with speed the other way. Here's Cruz out in front. Morris able to make the stop. Again, Kale Morris coming up big for Notre Dame. Another shot, not at a great angle, just throwing it out in front of net. And Morris cuts off the angle right there, then slides back using his right leg, extending the left as well, just in case. He knows what he's doing between the pipes, that's for sure. I mean, he was the best goalie in the nation a couple of years ago. There is a penalty on Notre Dame for slashing, so. Yeah, Bowling we did Green see that. First game. We first did see that called right after that shot attempt there for Bowling Green. So we'll see the Falcons on the power play. This is a Bowling Green team that does a nice job on the power play, just over 20% on the season. But Notre Dame, one of the best penalty killing units in the country. That's one of the Irish's its strengths this year, along with power play goals. I mean, 
They're first in the Big Ten in penalty kill. That's pretty impressive. Special teams has been big for Notre Dame this year. Here's Johnson down for Barber near the end line. Cam Burke trying to get a clearance. Didn't get a clean stick on it. And Clerman will just fire it down the ice. 120 left on the power play for Bowling Green. Here is Alec Rauhauser, who we talked about in the open, one of the best offensive defensemen in the country. He's someone that is really key for the Falcons on the power play. Yeah, from the point he's able to create so much for Bowling Green. And with this being their first power play opportunity, we haven't seen a ton of Rauhauser tonight. Expect to see him, though, moving throughout the rest of this one. He will make his presence felt at some point. So far, Notre Dame doing a nice job on the kill, getting a couple of clearances. Here comes Cameron Wright. Wright in behind. Plays back for Thea Cherdis. Now Colin. Thea Cherdis once again. Now for Schneider. A rip from the point from Thea Cherdis. It's tipped out. Janicki may have a chance at a breakaway. He's out in front, but Dot makes the save. A great shorthanded look, but Dot makes the stop. Ten seconds left on the power play for Bowling Green. And Jake Pavanka will play it down into the corner to wind down the final seconds of that power play. So Notre Dame, once again, one for one on the penalty kill. They have been so strong in that category this season. What a penalty kill for Notre Dame. Janicki almost came up with a shorthanded goal. That would have been Notre Dame's second of the year. They were just in complete control. Nothing materializing for Bowling Green on that chance. Just over a minute left in this first period. There's a shot stopped by Morris. Now looking ahead the other way for Morrison. And Morrison puts the brakes on, plays it around the boards for Hellickson at the blue line. Graham with a shot that's deflected. And then that pass went off of Graham's skate. So Bowling Green will take over possession as Notre Dame gets a line change. Lincoln Held will just dump it in as the Falcons change themselves. Here's Matt Steves. Steves unable to maintain possession there. And the Falcons clear it out. Here's Steves. He was looking into the slot for Cam Burke, but the pass went wide. Final seconds of the first period. As a hand pass down into the zone for Bowling Green will end what was a great first period. We're knotted up at one here between Bowling Green and Notre Dame. The Falcons got on the board first with Casey Lincoln held, but Cam Morrison tied it up for the Irish.
Cool. Welcome back to Compton Family Ice Arena. Bowling Green and Notre Dame tied at one after one, and what a great look that was for Trevor Janicki. Short-handed as Notre Dame was on the penalty kill. Yeah, Janicki had a great opportunity there, and Notre Dame showcasing one of its strengths, which is the penalty kill. They're also pretty good on offense in power play situations, too. But the fact that Notre Dame's even able to generate that chance with Trevor Janicki shows how strong their pe uh, penalty kill really is. That was a great look for the Irish, who came into this game at 87% on the penalty kill on the season. It's been a great matchup so far between Bowling Green and Notre Dame. And one of the stars for this Irish team this season has been Colin Tyson. And we're going to give you a chance to learn a little bit more about one of these stars for the Notre Dame program. Uh, I started playing hockey when I was around two. Uh, my dad and mom put me on skates with my brother, so we skated out in the pond in the backyard and just kind of learned from there. I just loved hockey and always played it, and I just think for all the time I put into it when I was little, I just realized I want to play this for the rest of my life. Yeah, my first time on campus, and I just fell in love with the place, and so I kind of always wanted to come here in the back of my mind, and for my visit, I came here and just knew it was the right place for me. Uh, yeah, my first goal was pretty cool. It was the first game. It was a good, good experience and really good to get the monkey off the back real quick. Because I like to say I'm a shooter. I like to shoot the puck, score goals, um, try to make plays, and um, just be good defensively too. Be a good 200 foot player all over the ice. I think what motivates me is just uh, the final goal where I want to be. Everyone wants to be in the NHL, so I think that coming to the rink every day, you just have that in the back of your mind and it gets me going every day. overlooking the campus at the University of Notre Dame where tonight we've got a great hockey matchup for you. Bowling Green and Notre Dame tied at one. Highlights and stats coming up next.
Bowling Green and Notre Dame tied up at one after one, and Casey Lincoln held, got the Falcons on the board with the breakaway goal going to the backhand through the five hole for Kale Morris. Back here with Jack Kaiser, Connor Klingen here with you, and Jack, a fast-paced first period, both teams getting on the board. There was a lot of offense early on for both sides, two early goals, then the defenses started to settle in. We saw a shorthanded chance for Notre Dame with Trevor Janicki. Nothing amounted from that. These two teams will start to settle in. We'll start to see the defense pick up in the second and third periods, but that was a high-flying first period. It absolutely was. Cam Morrison scored the goal for Notre Dame on the power play with the deflection as we take a look at some of the highlights from that first period. Notre Dame early pressure. Bowling Green had it too though. Some turnovers in, front, in the neutral zone from Notre Dame led to opportunities like this one for Casey Lincoln held. And he just goes five hole on Kale Morris. That's a ridiculous move from Lincoln held. But Notre Dame on the power play. That is the Irish's strength this year. And Morrison just standing right in front of Dapa. Beautiful screen. Gets the deflection, gets the goal, that tied it up, and Notre Dame started to build some momentum, settle in defensively on the penalty kill. Here's that chance from Janicki, just could not finish it off. Eric Dopp was able to recover, make a, a nice save on that one. And here's our first period stats. As we take a look at the stats, one category Notre Dame is really dominating the face-offs, and that didn't seem to have a huge impact on that first period, but if Notre Dame continually gains that much possession, that could definitely play a role in the final score. 57% on face-offs this year for Notre Dame. They're very strong on face-offs this year, and I think that could definitely play a huge factor for Notre Dame moving throughout the rest of this match and also throughout the rest of the year. Well, Jack, we mentioned the face-offs. What else do you see as having a major impact on the rest of this one? Well, I think Eric Dopp, uh, the two goalies, Cale Morse and, uh, and Eric Dopp, they're starting to settle in. So each team's going to apply offensive pressure. If those two goalies can do what they normally do, it seems like we're destined for overtime at this point because uh, the defenses are starting to come around. But we have two great goalies on display. Two great goalies, but both teams able to notch a goal in that first period. It's a fun one here tonight, and they've got the figure skaters out in action here at Compton Family Ice Arena. Bowling Green and Notre Dame tied at one. Great work on that. That was awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> Made it work. Yeah. talk for a living so I mean might as well get used to it. <laughs> exactly yeah.
Back inside the Compton Family Ice Arena and a non-conference game tonight between Bowling Green and Notre Dame. Well, we take a look at the conference standings as you see the Big Ten banners hanging here in Compton Family Ice Arena. Notre Dame currently sitting in second in the Big Ten, but they did have a tough series at Michigan State this past weekend. Yeah, came away with a loss in their most recent game against the Spartans. And you see five ranked teams right there in the Big Ten. This is a tough conference. You know what you're going to get year in and year out. Notre Dame, if they want to win their third straight Big Ten title, they got to go through the gauntlet. Penn State, Michigan State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Michigan. I, they're having a down year, but previous seasons, Michigan's been right up there. This is a big time conference, and Notre Dame has its work cut out for it moving forward. Yeah, it's an extremely difficult conference to pay, play in, and the Irish prepare themselves for that by also playing tough opponents in the non conference. And Bowling Green is definitely one of those coming out of the WCHA. And we take a look at the standings in that conference. The Falcons currently sitting in fourth. Minnesota State, the number one team in the country right now out of that conference. That's really impressive to have the number one team in the nation in your conference. Bowling Green is the only other ranked team. Even teams near the bottom right there, Alaska Anchorage provided some difficulties for Bowling Green early on this season. Both of these conferences, top to bottom, you don't know what you're going to get night in and night out. You have to come to play every single night. And we've seen that throughout the non-conference and in conference action so far this season. Yeah, well, Jack, this Bowling Green team is hoping to compete for a WCHA title you think that they have the horses to do it? I think they do. And they're a young but talented group. It's about consistency right now for Bowling Green. Head coach Ty Eigner said, we've got the pieces. There's been an adjustment period early on this season, but they're starting to come together. There's been four or five games where Eigner said, we've been 100% happy, but you have to establish that consistency, especially if, uh, if you expect to go down the stretch Green just hoping to get to that level of consistency but for Notre Dame they're a team that typically struggles a little bit in the first period they come out of the first tide but they have six comeback victories this season six out of their total eight wins they have come from behind that's really impressive that shows senior leadership in addition to talent yes this Notre Dame team top to bottom is very young but they have senior leaders like Kale Morrison Kale Morris excuse me and Cal Berg Mike O'Leary up there as well. So they've got the horses. It's about establishing that consistency early on and, and changing that first period numbers. But if you do get, do get in a hole like Notre Dame did in the first period early this game against Bowling Green, they have the ability to come back. Oh, well, it was a good response from Notre Dame, but this Bowling Green team coming out to play here tonight in this two game series. Head coach Ty Eigner was telling me the other day, no turkey after 1 p.m. today. Don't want to have that tryptophan effect. Well, yeah, turkey makes you sleepy. You, you can't <laughs> have that coming to play Notre Dame. He said they would have no problem getting pumped up for this game, turkey or not. Well, certainly both teams enjoyed their Thanksgiving. As many of the Bowling Green players spent their Thanksgiving at Alex Barber's grandparents' house, who live locally in the Bowling Green area. There's Cal Burke in behind. Now a chance for Morrison in the slot. Saved by Dopp, and now he'll just fall on it to freeze the puck. As we get another look at this, Jack, a good look for the Irish early on in the second period. Yeah, Notre Dame coming out aggressive, and... That's what the Irish will need to do early on. It was Bowling Green that was the aggressor early. We got a breakaway opportunity with Lincoln held, but just putting pucks on net, putting pucks right near the chest of Eric Dopp. You figure eventually he'll let one slide through. You just have to continue to pester him with those shots. Faceoff is won by the Falcons. That's an area that Notre Dame dominated in that first period, 13-4. Little tie up along the boards near the Notre Dame bench. Colin with possession in the neutral zone. The Irish able to clear it out of danger. Here's a turnover. But offsides is the call. 
Still dangerously close to a, a poor turnover there for Notre Dame. That's what got the Irish in trouble in the first period. Some turnovers near the neutral zone led to big time Bowling Green opportunities. Well, we saw the one goal from Bowling Green coming off of a turnover. Casey Lincoln held on the breakaway. So the Irish have to be careful with the puck. And that's what Jeff Jackson was saying. Bowling Green is a very aggressive team. So Notre Dame needs to make sure to make the right choices with the puck. Bowling Green has to be aggressive tonight. They have no choice. Notre Dame undefeated at home. Bowling Green has to be the aggressor on the road. But they've been a good road team this year at 5-1. and one. As Colin Tyson goes down. Now Hellickson will play it in behind. And it's back for Bowling Green. Here's Letourneau. Had to play it to himself. Takes a hit into the boards. And now here's Lieberman. Out of the stick of Hellickson. Hellickson plays it off the boards for Janicki. Janicki onto the backhand. And now an opportunity for Tyson. Lieberman with a shot, but that's blocked. Musser got a stick in there. Graham had an opportunity. And then that shot is deflected high, coming from Pierce Crawford. Another good sequence there for Notre Dame. Irish have come out in a good mood here offensively to start this second period. Lieberman had a good look in front of net on that last sequence. You're right, Connor. They, they provided some early pressure early on here in the second. He took the wrist shot after a, a slight hesitation. I think if he gets that shot off a little quicker, that doesn't allow the Bowling Green defense to come in and block it. Irish win the faceoff once again. Irish keep the zone with Wraith, and his shot goes right into the chest of Eric Dock. Charlie Wraith has had a pretty solid year. Jeff Jackson really liked him in the opening weekend, and not a bad shot there. Again, just throw those pucks on net a little bit high, but you still force Dock to get up out of his stance and, and make a save. Yeah, Wraith is another player that Coach Jackson has continued to see improve over the course of this season. And it's a young group for Coach Jackson, one of the 10 youngest teams in the country in terms of age, but there is so much talent on this roster. Talent and, and experienced leaders, that's the key. If you can mix youth and veterans that lead your team, that's a deadly combination for Notre Dame. Rauhauser plays it out of the corner. Here's T.J. Lloyd. Lloyd with a shot. Morris plays it back behind the net with his stick. Here's Burke with some space in the neutral zone. Potential three on two for the Irish. O'Leary tried to bring it back in front. Now he's in behind, trying to find the stick of Burke. Dello keeps the zone. Now the Falcons come back the other way with it before it's very quickly taken away by Clerman. A shot from Steves goes wide, and now it's taken away by the Falcons with Theo Cherdis. Up ahead here's Alex Steves. Steves with a wide angle shot, save made by Dopp. Not great chances for either side, but we're seeing fresh legs. We're seeing the, seeing the pace start to really pick up early on in the second. That's what we saw in the first, over the first you know, five to ten minutes of that period. And that's when the two goals came. Then the defense has started to settle in. No blood drawn yet, but we're seeing a lot of fresh legs out there in fast play. It's the first of a two-game set between Notre Dame and Bowling Green. Tomorrow night they will play in Bowling Green, Ohio. A longtime CCHA rivalry. The last meeting came in 2013 in the CCHA quarterfinals. The last Notre Dame player to score a goal against Bowling Green before tonight, that was Anders Lee. And now he's the captain for the New York Islanders. So that's pretty impressive, I'd say. 
one of the all-time greats for this Notre Dame hockey program. The captains in Notre Dame have just been so great over the years, and Cal Burke has filled that role this season. He has lived up to the hype, tied for first on the team in 14 points. You expect that tradition to continue under Jeff Jackson. Irish trying to play it out of their defensive zone. A little scrum along the boards. Oh, and a turnover in the defensive zone. A chance for Bowling Green, but a save made by Morris. And another opportunity. Another stop by Morris. Now Rauhauser with a shot. That's blocked away. Rauhauser once again from the point. Another block for the Irish. Clerman using the body. He didn't have a stick. When you don't have the stick, that's all you got. Clerman just goes right down to the ground, down to the ice, and he's able to make the save. A huge save there from Clerman on some pressure from Bowling Green. And the Irish will take the icing, a face-off in the defensive zone for Notre Dame. But what a sequence from Bowling Green. But a great block by Clerman, not afraid to use the body. He kicks his legs out one way. He puts his hand down the other way. Spreads your body out as much as you can. That right leg actually kicks out to the right at the last moment. Nate Clerman brings physicality. He brings toughness to the defenseman group for Notre Dame this year. He's just a sophomore, and Jeff Jackson really likes what he's been seeing from him lately. Ellickson in behind. Here's Colin near the point. Colin looking out in front. It's deflected, taken away by Notre Dame. Here's Janicki once again. Janicki in on top. The shot hits the post. Another opportunity for the Irish from the point gets deflected high. Great opportunities for both teams in the past couple of minutes. But we're still tied at one. And Janicki, what a look. Just rings off the post, but that's the second run out for Janicki this game. Here we see Janicki once again, the freshman. Janicki just might have gotten away with a high stick right near the Bowling Green bench. No call, though. Here's Burke. Up ahead, Lieberman. Looking for O'Leary, but the pass is just behind him. That's a combination Notre Dame's got to hit on. Would have been a great look for O'Leary. Now on the other side. Here's Barber. He's taken down, and this will draw a penalty. A delayed penalty, and the whistle blows. Bowling Green will be on the power play when we come back. Falcons and Irish tied at one. Janicki literally took his stick, reached up, and, and poked the guy in the face in front of the referee, and he just looked at it and didn't call anything. <laughs> wow. Back inside, Compton Family Ice Arena and Bowling Green about to go on the power play. Tori Dello commits the penalty for Notre Dame as we take another look. He just wraps him up completely and, and takes him down to the ground. That's going to be a penalty every single time. So Bowling Green with its second power play chance. Notre Dame's penalty kill in the first time. That led to the shorthanded chance for Trevor Janicki. Let's see if Notre Dame can come up with a shorthanded chance. They're just 
be as swarming as they were on that first penalty kill. Here's Rauhauser at the point. He's somebody that the Falcons will rely on quite a bit on their power play. Down near the goal line for Barber. Barber out in front with a shot. Morris makes the save and draws a stoppage. It's always scary when there's a lot of traffic right in front of net, a lot of bodies in there. If there's a rebound, it could just poke right into the back of the net. But Morris, he's a pro. He knows what he's doing. Just wraps it up as quickly as he possibly can. Falcons 0 for 1 so far tonight, but they came into this game as one of the top 25 power plays in the nation. Here's Barber out in front, nobody there. Burke takes it away. Nice keep by Rauhauser. Kept it in the zone for the Falcons. Now Cruz out in front. Barber shot score. Falcons take the lead 2 to 1. Beautiful just execution. Yep, Barber, far post. Just throw it right in front. Barber waiting there. He's planted. That's his spot. And it squeaks through behind Clerman. Barber planted. All he has to do is pull the trigger, and it's an easy goal. So the Falcons take the lead on the power play. We talked about both of these teams have great power plays. They also have great penalty kills. But now both teams have notched a power play goal tonight. I was just about to say the penalty kill of Notre Dame is beating the power play of Bowling Green right until Barber picked up the second goal for the Falcons. So we've seen one round go each way though so far. Penalty kill for Notre Dame's been successful and a power play chance successful for Bowling Green. Now let's see if Notre Dame can respond like they did after the last goal from the Falcons. Yeah, a bit of a miscue there for a usually strong Notre Dame penalty kill. Nobody watching Barber, and he's wide open for the goal. Dumped down the ice, but it was deflected. Kept in by Craggs, and a save made by Morris. Lieberman brings it into the neutral zone. Loses possession as Justin Wells dumps it down the ice. Michael Graham, the sophomore, looking ahead for Tyson. Battles around the boards. Janicki back into the corner for Tyson. And he loses possession quickly. Over in behind. Now Rauhauser setting up at the point. Crags with a shot, saved by Morris. Rebound taken by Stastny for Notre Dame. That was a good decision from Rauhauser to set up Crags. He didn't have the angle. Crags had a better one, almost led to a Bowling Green goal. And another takeaway for the Falcons in the neutral zone. Barber with a shot, left it wide. Now Rauhauser winds up, and that's deflected. Rauhauser angles it off the boards. Looking ahead for Graham. And now it's back for Bowling Green. Just over 10 minutes to play in this second period. The Falcons with a 2-1 lead off of the power play goal by Alex Barber. Dumped down into the corner. Now in behind. Left out in front by Pitters. Theocheritis keeps it in the zone for the Falcons. Now Colin, the defenseman, skating down into the corner. It's taken by Tori Dello. He tried to backhand it out of the zone, but it's kept in. Notre Dame just cannot get it out of their defensive zone. Theocheritis angles it off the boards. Colin comes down to play it. It's taken away by Cam Morrison, and finally Notre Dame gets it out of their own zone as Bowling Green will get a change. What a possession right there for Bowling Green. Their puck handling was fabulous. 
Notre Dame just could not find a way to take it away. And then when it looked like it, they had a chance to push through the neutral zone into offense. They just couldn't do it. Bowling Green with another sustained offensive possession. They took the lead on the power play goal by Alex Barber. Bowling Green with a 2-1 lead over Notre Dame, and you may see a few mustaches in the crowd tonight at Compton Family Ice Arena. And along with some of those fake mustaches in the crowd, some of the Notre Dame players on the bench sporting real mustaches, and that's a part of Movember, a great cause to promote men's health. Yeah, those are the real deal, a great cause indeed, but the players are just looking for an excuse to grow a mustache. And <laughs> they're, they're having fun with it, certainly, but like we said, a great cause for men's health. And I don't know about you, Connor. I can't really grow one. Uh, I, I don't think I can either, Jack. But in, in hockey, you always think about the playoff beard. But some pretty good-looking stashes on that Notre Dame bench. You get the combination of the stash and the beard. And those players that can grow the hair out, long locks flowing out of the helmet, that's a, a killer combination right there. The Irish right now finding themselves in a two to one hole. Bowling Green with that power play goal by Alex Barber. On the ice, Slagger trying to chase it down. Dello keeps it in the zone for Notre Dame. Dello whipped on a shot attempt, and this one goes back down the ice where Hellickson will chase it down as Connor Ford comes on the four check. Bowling Green's been pretty physical out of the break here on the offensive side and defensive side, checking some players hard. There's a pass back into the defensive zone for the Falcons. Both teams will get a change as Cruz fires a shot wide. Here's Pavanka in the neutral zone for Notre Dame. Lerman with a nice keep. He plays it along the boards for Statsny. Now Clerman, chance in front for Lansdell, but he lost the puck. Clerman with an opportunity, shot is deflected high. Nice keep in by Colin Tyson. Michael Graham in behind the net. Now Lansdell with a shot, it's blocked. Right out in front, Graham and a save by Dopp. And now a little extracurricular activity as well after the whistle. It's Rauhauser and Graham scuffling on the ground. Rauhauser's not backing down from anybody. He provides a physical presence for Bowling Green. And Graham right in front of net, he had a chance. And they just kept going at it. That was a really solid block from Bowling Green. And then that extra effort at the end, uh, that didn't sit too well with the Bowling Green players, so down to the ground they go. Well, it's starting to look like the old CCHA rivalry that it was back in the day. These two teams, as we mentioned earlier, they haven't played each other since 2013, but this is a Bowling Green program looking to come in and make a statement. They're coming off of their first NCAA tournament appearance in 29 years. This program's on the rise. There's no doubt about it. Notre Dame has been there before, but Bowling Green is coming. Here's Cam Burke in the corner. 
And that pass went off the back of the post. And now it's taken away by the Falcons. Skating with speed, Cameron right up the left side, out in front. The pass missed Craggs. Cale Morris went tumbling. Now the puck is tied up in the corner. Him and Cam Burke collided pretty hard down there, but it looks like they're okay. Now a shot off the backhand from right is deflected and blocked. And a big hit over there near the boards. Physicality starting to increase in this game, Jack. Both of these teams starting to become more familiar, and we saw the little scuffle after that last opportunity for Notre Dame and some bigger hits here in this second period. Well, guess what? These two teams get to play again tomorrow, so you're going to expect some more chippiness tomorrow night. Here's Cal Burke in close. Unable to get a shot off. Here's Lincoln held. Puts on the brakes. Lays back for Wells. Wells near the goal line. Tried to pass it into the slot for Pitters, but it missed his stick. Dello had a decent hit there, but Bowling Green just kept working inside and almost got a solid chance once again. They've been physical, and they've taken the physicality of Notre Dame, too. Pass deflected back into the defensive zone for Bowling Green. Under six to play here in the second period. The Falcons with a two to one lead. Here's Pavanka. That shot is blocked. Clerman keeps the zone for the Irish. Janicki around the boards. Pavanka chases it down in behind. Pavanka goes to the backhand. Little traffic in front. And the puck squirts out to the corner. Lerman unable to keep it this time. Cruz trying to chase it down, pass it to himself. On the backhand, he scores! What a goal by Brandon Cruz, and then he went hard into the boards after Bowling Green with a two-goal lead. That's just Brandon Cruz chasing down a puck out in front, and then a backhand shot, a tough stop for Morris, but Cruz coming in hot. I mean, that is such a difficult shot. Opposite post, too. Then he slides hard into the boards. Looks like Cruz is a little shaken up, but a very impressive play from Cruz. His first goal of the year. What a way to score your first goal of the season. Cruz with nine assists on the year, so he's been an offensive contributor, but he shows his skill. The fifth round pick in 2018 by the Vegas Golden Knights, and they have to like seeing that out in Vegas. The future for the Knights, part of it, Brandon Cruz looking impressive there. I, I think it's safe to say that was the best play we've seen all night. I mean, just individually what Cruz was able to do there, just outstanding. And now another opportunity in the slot. Irish force a turnover. Ellickson for Tyson. Tyson with some space, but that shot is saved by Dopp with the glove. How about Bowling Green coming in here? They've made a statement early on against Notre Dame. The Falcons with a two-goal lead thanks to the efforts of Brandon Cruz. What a goal for Bowling Green. <laughs> I was like, who are they playing? <laughs> I think this is a good time for you to mention the fact that they almost went to club status. Um, sure. Yes. I think that's yes. a good story for you to Definitely. do. Definitely. Thank you. Bowling Green with a two-goal lead over Notre Dame here in the second period. 
And Ty Eichner feels that this program is back where it belongs. The 1984 national champions, they made nine NCAA tournament appearances from 1977 to 1990, but they went through a lull. And there was a period back in 2009 where people were talking about this program dropping down to club status. They're certainly far from that now after making the NCAA tournament last season. They really are. I mean, that's hard to believe. Almost about 10 years ago, thinking about dropping down to club and now they're a, a top 16 team in the country bowling green is on the rise very quickly here's a chance for burke with a backhand puck was still loose no whistle and now the whistle comes out and once again another scuffle after the whistle the physicality is definitely increased in the second period here especially late as so we take another look at this, Jack, a decent chance off the backhand, and then Notre Dame just trying to pry the puck loose out of Eric Dopp. The whistle had it blown yet, but it, it did look like Dopp had it. Dopp definitely had it, and it was a shove from O'Leary on a Bowling Green player from behind. He shoved him right into Dopp that ended up sort of starting that little scuffle. So some extracurriculars after the play and, and some physical checks as well have led to a very physical overall second period for both sides. Well, we said it earlier, it looks like they're back in the CCHA where they were conference rivals for a number of years. Bowling Green did have a chance to play in this building a couple of seasons, uh, the last time in 2012, 2013, but most of those games here at Notre Dame were taking place back at the old auxiliary dome at the Joyce Center where Notre Dame used to play before Compton Family Ice Arena was built in 2011. I mean, this place is unbelievable. This is an NHL caliber facility that Notre Dame gets to play in. They've been fantastic here this season, 6-0, but Bowling Green has not been afraid. The Falcons threatening to be the first team to win here at Compton against the Irish this season. Lieberman off for Graham. Graham with a shot that goes wide. Lieberman plays it along the boards. Into the neutral zone. Irish gain possession. The whistle here, offside. Bowling Green just feels in, in complete control at this point, obviously up two, just with how physical they're being. Notre Dame isn't getting a ton of great looks, whereas Bowling Green, maybe they're not getting quite as many, but the ones they are getting are very sound, and they've taken advantage while Notre Dame hasn't. Well, Ty Eigner said before this game that for Bowling Green, yes, it's important nationally trying to make a statement in these two games, but what's more important for him is finding out who are those players that can contribute individually against a program like Notre Dame, and I think he's found a few tonight. Brandon Cruz, most definitely one of them with that most recent goal. Here's Rauhauser with a shot and a score. It's four to one, Falcons. It was a matter of time before tonight's impact players showed up. A great offensive defenseman, right in the circle, left side, just puts a shot on net, and it finds its way to the back. Rauhauser, another goal for him. I mean, he just keeps coming and coming, and eventually he'll break through. He does late in the second. Sixth goal of the season for Alec Rauhauser. You said it, Jack, one of the best offensive defensemen in the country. And it's a three-goal lead for the Falcons here on the road. We were just talking about this building so difficult to win in, but Bowling Green has not been phased at all. I mean, shocking. Notre Dame's blown teams out in non-conference this year, and I think everyone knew this would be a, a tightly contested game, but I don't think many of these Irish fans saw this coming. 4-1 lead for Bowling Green. Notre Dame's going to have to get to work very quickly. They are a comeback team, but... A period and, and 2.46 left. Notre Dame has to move very quick. And now an icing. Bowling Green with a 4-1 to lead with 2.46 left here in the second period.
Notre Dame has still outshot the Falcons in this one, 24 to 18, but Bowling Green has been in control here in this second. They've scored all three goals in the middle, middle period. Another chance there as Ford was out in front screening Morris, but he's able to make the save. The possession for Bowling Green, it, it's all been on offense the last few minutes. Notre Dame hasn't been able to generate anything. And you're right, Connor. Notre Dame out shooting Bowling Green at this point. But the high quality chances, the quality of those shots for Bowling Green is through the roof. The Falcons with a 4 to 1 lead here with 234 left in the second period, playing some excellent hockey on the road tonight. And then they'll get a chance tomorrow night to host the Irish on home ice. Here's Theo Cherdis. Shot from the point is blocked. That pass went off of his skate. Now Schneider into the defensive zone, trying to chase it down. He went down. So Johnson keeps it over. Theo Cherdis at the point. Played down into the corner. Just over two minutes left, second period. Bowling Green with a 4-1 to one lead over Notre Dame. Theo Cherdis with a shot, and it's stopped by Morris. Theo Cherdis, a clear lane, just let it loose on a wrister. Went right to Morris. There was some traffic out in front of the net, but on the left side, there was a lane that Thea Cherdis found. Him and the, and the Falcons are impressing the, the few Falcons fans that are here today. Yeah, some fans made the trip over from Bowling Green. It's not that far, is it? No, not too far at all. Just two and a half in hours Northwest or so. Ohio. And we were talking about it earlier. This was a proud program, and they feel that they're getting back to where they belong. And the fans have to be very excited about that there in Northwest Ohio. Here's Graham in behind. He loses possession. Potential two on one briefly materialized, but that pass is deflected high. And here comes Lieberman the other way for Notre Dame. Michael Graham in the neutral zone. In behind for Colin Tyson. Now Dello at the point. Dello with a shot that goes wide. Here's Tyson. Just about a minute left here in the second period. A period that was dominated by Bowling Green. They've outscored Notre Dame three to nothing here in the second. Barber with a shot that's blocked. Slaggered in the neutral zone. And Dopp will just play this one to himself and freeze the puck. Notre Dame can win a faceoff here and generate some offense over the final 40.6. They've got a long way to go down by three, but a goal here would be huge for the Irish moving forward. Two goal deficit, definitely surmountable, but three, it's going to be a challenge. But the faceoff won by Bowling Green. Back in the defensive zone for Notre Dame with just over 30 to play in the second. Theo Cherdis over the blue line. Back in behind, tries the wraparound, and Morris makes the save. Another solo effort from Theo Cherdis, just rapper, wrapping around, going far post. Morris anticipated that time, was able to stump it off, but Bowling Green again the aggressor. And the Falcons will have a face-off in the defensive zone for Notre Dame. And despite the fact we mentioned that Notre Dame's out shooting Bowling Green 25-21 right now, for most of this second period, the puck was in Notre Dame's defensive zone. Wells rings it around the boards. Down to the other end of the ice. Schneider in behind. About two seconds left. And that will wind down 
The second period, Bowling Green with a three goal lead. It's four to one after two. The Falcons dominated this second. They're up by three as we head to the second intermission. I think it's uh, I think it sounded really good. Yeah, so far. I think, I think so well. too. You're doing awesome, man. You too. I mean, yeah. It, I mean. It, I am uh, The Golden Dome lit up on the campus of the University of Notre Dame. Bowling Green with a 4-1 to one lead through two periods here at Compton Family Ice Arena in the first game of a two-game home-and-home non-conference series between the Falcons and the Irish. And what would you fight for is a series that's produced by Notre Dame and NBC that highlights Notre Dame's philanthropic work across the globe. And we have another edition of What Would You Fight For coming up right after this. Pile of cough. Restore all my relations to the natural world and universe. Here in the Nipikeya, the Navajo homeland, we continue to teach and live by these values to stay in balance with the world that we live in, to stay rooted in our traditions, and to evolve those traditions to meet our modern needs. In the fall of 2018, the University of Notre Dame's undergraduate architecture program was approached by the St. Michael Indian School in Arizona's Navajo Nation to develop a campus plan that would honor its history and Navajo tradition. We haven't always had that opportunity as the net people to give shape to the spaces that we build. And so to be able to create that architecturally, it was transformative for the students and the community. We've learned that a building can be much more than four walls. It should incorporate colors, beliefs, and symbols that are meaningful. We've also learned to consider things that we wouldn't have to think about elsewhere, like positioning the building to the east to welcome the new day and the community. 
This kind of experience is important for Notre Dame students because we ground our curriculum in Greco-Roman classicism. Then it's very important for our students to take those fundamental lessons and then reinterpret them in other contexts. To be able to be involved in this project as a student has really shown me the power of architecture and what we create and how it will impact not only this generation, but also many future generations to come. The University of Notre Dame asks, what would you fight for? Fighting to build on tradition. We are the Fighting Irish. The shoot the puck taking the place here at Compton Family Ice Arena. And that one just missed wide. The Irish trail Bowling Green four to one here at the second intermission. Highlights and stats coming up. I got it in. I got it. I, I, Second intermission here at Compton Family Ice Arena. Bowling Green with a 4-1 lead over Notre Dame through two. The Falcons scored three goals in that second period, and we welcome you back inside the booth. Jack Kaiser, Connor Klingen here with you, and Jack, a dominant second period for Bowling Green. What was the key? Well, they were aggressive. They were physical with Notre Dame. Notre Dame had more shots. They have more shots than Bowling Green right now but they're, Notre Dame's not getting as high quality of looks as Bowling Green at this juncture. And Bowling Green also got great individual plays. Cruz, what a run for him in that backhanded goal. Slid hard into the boards, but you, you combine those individual great plays with being aggressive as a team, that's gonna lead to a, a three goal lead like they have right now. So a great second period for the Falcons. They have that comfortable three goal lead, but what can Notre Dame do to try to get back in this one in the third period? I think they start need to, they start need, they need to start pushing on defense more. They, they need to attack at the points and, and force some Bowling Green turnovers because that's what the Falcons have done to the Irish. And if Notre Dame can, can respond with that early in the third period with pressure, force some turnovers, I think they can start to change the tide. Three goals down, though, they're going to have to do it quick. Well, it was a great second period for Bowling Green, giving them that three-goal lead. And we take a look now at the highlights from this game so far. 
and early on in that first period, we were knotted up at one, but Bowling Green starts to take over, starting with this power play goal by Alex Barber. Yeah, Barber backside just had it planted. What a pass right in front of the net. Barber knew where he had to be. The pass just had to get through, and it did. And then what a play from Cruz, out and running. I mean, most of the time, you're not going to make that shot, but Cruz, outstanding, picks up his first goal of the year on that one. Takes a hard hit, but he's able to recover. And then Rauhauser coming in from the left side, right in the circle. Not a great angle, but he still finds the back of the net. Bowling Green, fantastic all around. Again, that combination of physicality and great individual plays has led to this lead. Well, Brandon Cruz, you saw him score on that goal. He also had the assists on the power play goal. As we take a look at the stats through two, we've mentioned a couple of times, Notre Dame leading in shots, also dominating on the faceoff dot, but it hasn't mattered tonight. It really hasn't because Bowling Green's maximized its opportunities despite the fact that they are getting outshot. Notre Dame has to have very, ma high very many high quality looks. A couple runouts with Janicki, but that's really been about it for Notre Dame since they scored their first goal. So the Irish just have to be more aggressive on, on defense, I think, at this point and start forcing some turnovers. Well, Jack, you mentioned aggressiveness on defense and forcing turnovers. What players for Notre Dame need to step up in this third period for them to come back? I think on defense, Lieberman can, can push at the point a little bit more, and then Cal Burke, they got to find a way to get him involved. I mean, Burke, our impact player coming into this game, if they feed Burke with some room to operate, you know he can make an impact leading the team in points this year. They just got to get on the puck and they, they haven't been able to do that yet. And for Bowling Green, they have a three-goal lead heading into this third period, a comfortable lead, but what's the key to them holding on and coming coming away with a victory here on the road? We talked about Notre Dame defensive pressure. Bowling Green can't turn it over. They, they have to take care of the puck, be smart with their passes, and if they do that, they're almost guaranteed to win this game out by three goals. They can't have turnovers in the neutral zone. They can't lead to runouts for Notre Dame. If Bowling Green can do that, they'll hang on and then go home with a win. Well, we saw the Falcons jump out to a three-goal lead in that second period, but we also saw the physicality start to increase, looking like the old CCHA days. Bowling Green with a 4-1 to one lead after two. Great job. You too, man. I said <laughs> ball one time, not puck. <laughs> oh, I, did, I didn't even notice. So. I didn't notice either <laughs> until like. Perfect. Yeah. I, hey, I, I wait, wait oh, to I fill. Ball. Wait, wait to <laughs> fill. I mean, I felt like I asked the same question <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I, no, 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 no. I, 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 I really didn't have much. Yeah. Leaves people like me who uh, aren't necessarily hey, hockey you, experts to, to, to get you, it going. You filled that time very well. I, I thought you did a great job. Thanks, man. You're, you're doing awesome. So I'm just trying not to screw anything up. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever been on camera that much. <laughs> <laughs> like. The most I've ever been on is open and then one half hit time. at halftime. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. That's we're a lot. Uh, we're on for at least, you know, we've been on it for at least a minute a couple different times yeah. in each, yeah. each break. That's all right. It's good practice. That's true. It, it is. It is. We had, uh, I had to host a centennial broadcast for, for Ball State last year, and we, uh, like we basically, they basically said, okay, you're gonna have these interviews. The rest of the time, you have to fill with chatter about the university. And I'm like, <laughs> what the heck am I gonna talk about with Ball State? Oh. So, I mean, this and probably this and probably that are like my two finest accomplishments as far as filling. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's great stuff. I mean, <sighs> Hopefully, I didn't sound too ignorant. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't think so.
third period about to get started here at Compton Family Ice Arena. Bowling Green with a 4-1 to one lead over the Fighting Irish. And a new goalie entering for Notre Dame, Ryan Bischel coming in for Cale Morris. Uh, Bischel the only one to play besides Morris this season. He's 3-0. He's allowed six goals, 929 save percentage for Bischel this season. Played three years with Fargo in the USHL. He is just a freshman, so he represents the future at goalie for Notre Dame. We'll see what he's got here in the third period, but Cale Morris, unfortunately, a rough night for him through the first two. Yeah, Kill Morris ends up getting pulled heading into this third period after giving up the four goals. A couple of them didn't really seem to be his fault. The one that maybe stands out was the goal by Rauhauser, one that Morris probably would want to have back. Yeah, bad angle of going across the post to the far side, and Morris was unable to come up with a stop. But what did Rauhauser do? He elevated the puck, and that's kind of the formula against Morris because he's so good side to side. And you're right, Connor. A couple of those weren't his fault, but still, four goals scored nonetheless for Bowling Green. Here's Morrison. Notre Dame starting with possession here in the third period, trailing by three goals. In this non-conference series between a couple of top 20 teams. Bowling Green came into this game ranked 16th in the country, Notre Dame at fifth. Here's Colin, bringing it past the goal line. Goes back for Schneider, now to the point with Doherty. And behind Johnson, Colin unable to keep it in. And with Notre Dame pulling Morris, sometimes also though, regardless of, of whether he was playing well or whether the goals were his fault, sometimes for a goalie, when they've given up four goals, sometimes you just need to give them that break mentally and physically. Yeah, it can definitely be tasking and moving forward. You want Morris to be fresh going into tomorrow night against Bowling Green. Tough night for him, the, the entire Notre Dame team thus far. But you're right, Connor. That's that's a great point. He needs to he needs to recover mentally at this point. Also gives Bischel some confidence moving forward too. Yeah, and the normal backup, Dylan St. Cyr, is a player that they're trying to preserve a year of eligibility for. And so that's the reason you see Bischel instead of Dylan St. Cyr, who you'd maybe expect to be the backup goalie for Notre Dame. But they're hoping that when Cale Morris's career is over, St. Cyr can take over and be the starter for this Notre Dame team. And it never hurts to have depth at goalie. So when St. Cyr does take over, Ryan Bischel looks to be the backup. You want to have a backup ready to go. You never know if someone's going to get injured, not playing well. So this is a great chance for Bischel to get some time in. Uh, and, and seemingly, like we said, we'll back up St. Cyr next year. Falcons skate with it out of their own zone. Here's right on the right side, and a pad save made by Bischel. That's what you want to do against a new goalie. Pepper him with some shots. You never know how a goalie will react to coming in cold off the bench. Sometimes it works out well. Sometimes they're fresh. Sometimes they're seeing the puck very well. And other times, you're right, Connor, that they aren't. So you want to pepper him. And Bowling Green up four. They can't turn it over like we talked about, but they still want to apply some pressure and not let Notre Dame get into any type of rhythm. That puck went all the way down the ice for icing, so a face-off in the Notre Dame defensive zone for Bowling Green. A 4-1 to one lead for the Falcons, and the other thing, too, is with that comfortable lead, they don't want Notre Dame to get any momentum back heading into that second game tomorrow night at Bowling Green. We talked about it in the volleyball match earlier. It's about carrying momentum into the next set, and that's the case here with Notre Dame carrying momentum into the next game. And the Irish, if they can find some offense, perhaps they can take that strategy moving forward. Here's Graham in the slot, makes a move. Didn't get a shot away. Michael Graham, the sophomore, coming off a tremendous freshman season. And he was a finalist for Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Deflection right in front, but it went high. Here's Hellickson at the point. Fires it off the boards. 
And the Falcons will skate into the neutral zone. Graham not as offensively productive as he, he was last year, at least not yet this season. He was just drifting too far to the right on that last chance. Wasn't able to get a shot off for Notre Dame. Here's Cal Burke in the neutral zone. For O'Leary, back for Burke, trying to find Morrison right out in front, but the pass missed his stick. No goal for Notre Dame, but a really good combination there. And like you said, Connor, O'Leary almost found Morrison. Cam Morrison has the lone goal tonight for Notre Dame. Scored on the power play off of the deflection. Janicki brings it into the zone, fires a shot, and it goes wide off the glass. Not many penalties for Bowling Green tonight. That's eight of the Falcons. We saw how good Notre Dame can be on the power play early. As this goes for icing, we take another look at that good chance for Notre Dame with Morrison out in front. Yeah, Burke to O'Leary trying to get back to Burke or Morrison out in front. Those three players can all score it. When you all have all of them running towards goal, skating towards goal at the same time, I mean, that's that can be deadly. So a good chance for Notre Dame. And a penalty here called against Notre Dame going against Mike O'Leary for the Irish for slashing. He'll be in the box for two minutes. Bowling Green back on the power play where they scored one of those three goals in the second period. They're one for two so far tonight. Here's Johnson. Down to the goal line with Cruz. He's been very productive tonight. And Cruz just tried to hit Barber backside like he scored earlier this game. They have that play set up. Weren't able to connect this time. 90 seconds left on the power play. A chance perhaps for Bowling Green to put this game away with a goal here. Barber, save made. Bischel has come in for Cale Morris and made a couple of saves early on here in this third period. Played back into the neutral zone. Under a minute left now on the power play for the Falcons. The Ocherdis will reset things. Wright rings it around the boards. Back to the point, Theo Chertis winds up but delivers a pass back down to the goal line. They go for Theo Chertis. 30 seconds left on the power play. Theo Chertis with a wrister, saved by Michelle. Colin keeps it in the zone, under 20 on the power play. Here's Schneider out in front. There was a chance for Laterno. And now right with a shot. Puck still loose, and it's a goal for Freddie Laterno. Five to one, Bowling Green, as the Falcons score on the power play for the second time tonight. Laterno just missed on the first chance, but the second time around, off the rebound, he's standing right there, and all he has to do is put it in the back of the net. Second goal of the season for Freddie Laterno. Two power play goals for the Falcons tonight against a Notre Dame penalty kill that had been one of the best in the country coming into this game. They were fantastic leading the Big Ten. And, and Bowling Green has cut right through it. And it's come from a variety of players as well. What a performance so far for the Falcons with a four goal lead on the road against the Notre Dame team in the top five. Here's Lieberman. Lieberman into the slot, but a save by Dopp. What a save with the glove by Eric Dopp. Bowling Green with a 5-1 to one lead over Notre Dame, thanks to the goal by Freddie Letourneau.
was a hell of a save from Dopp. Um, should we talk Dopp maybe? I mean, I guess he's been. Yeah. Welcome back inside Compton Family Ice Arena. Bowling Green with a 5-1 to one lead, and Eric Dopp with a strong performance tonight for the Falcons. Yeah, he's picked up where he left off in the last four. Just three goals allowed in the previous four coming into this game. Only allowed one tonight, and just shut down a second from Notre Dame. A good stop on the breakaway. We mentioned at the top, Dopp spent the last two seasons as a backup for Ryan Bednard. He's come into the starting role, and he's done a very nice job for this Bowling Green team that is in need of a steady goaltender under first-year head coach Ty Eichner. Yeah, that never hurts for sure, but he got off to a rough start this year, allowed 11 goals in the first three games. But he, he, he's gotten really hot as of late, Bowling Green speaking. Clerman had a shot there, but it's deflected back into the neutral zone. Here's Johnson with a shot, saved by Bichelle. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Played back for Hellickson. A 5-1 to one lead for Bowling Green. The Falcons playing perhaps their best game of the season. I, I think they are. Just based on the stage that, that this game presented, Bowling Green, Notre Dame, an old rivalry. It, they haven't played in six to seven years. Notre Dame, top ten nationally. Bowling Green on the rise. And they come in here and they make a statement early with a goal. Notre Dame ties it up. And then the Falcons show resilience in that second period. Just dominated the entire way. And it looks like they, they just got the capper here in the third. Well, Bowling Green does have an overtime win over conference rival Minnesota State, who is the number one team in the country. But to come into Compton Family Ice Arena and a 5-1 to one lead, just a really impressive all-around performance from Bowling Green as we have a penalty here. Five and one road team this year. They've been road warriors for sure. Notre Dame's been great at home, so you knew something would give. And it definitely went the way of the Falcons today. Cameron Wright heading to the penalty box, so the Irish will be back on the power play. Notre Dame has scored a power play goal tonight. Came off the stick of Cam Morrison. This is interesting here to see if Notre Dame can establish some momentum moving into tomorrow. Lieberman with a shot. It's deflected out in front. Notre Dame unable to keep the zone. Penalty for holding on Cameron Wright. Notre Dame hoping to get a similar opportunity to the one they had in the first period, having Cam Morrison out there screening in front of Dopp. And it was Lieberman who set that all up. O'Leary in behind for Morrison. Battle for possession. Calbert keeps it in the zone. Cross ice pass for Tyson off his stick and out. Nothing flowing yet for Notre Dame on this power play. Unlike the first one they had earlier. Here's Letourneau short handed saved by Bischel. I don't think they ever blew that one dead. And the puck came out there. Both teams had to scramble to get ready back to play. Here's Pavanka. On the backhand. Stasny keeps it in the zone. 
Now across the ice, Pavanka. Nice defensive play there for the Falcons. Only 10 seconds left on the power play for the Irish. And they get a final clearance to kill off that power play. But here's Graham. And once again, cleared out by the Falcons. Graham thought he had Steve circling behind, and he tried to leave it behind him, but it was a Bowling Green Falcon right there. Another miscommunication. Into the corner, Schneider trying to chase it down. Now played back into the corner for Johnson. Over at the blue line, T.J. Lloyd. Tempting the one-timer there from Doherty. The puck squirted back into the neutral zone. Cam Burke with it behind the net for Notre Dame. Irish trying to get anything going, trailing by four goals. So that will take us to a break. Bowling Green with a 5-1 to one lead over Notre Dame. What was that penalty call? D did they call a penalty? Okay. No, they just. It was uh, offsides. Okay, I got you. I thought they called a penalty. Yeah, I thought I thought they did too for a second, but they just they open up the uh, penalty box during the uh, breaks. Yeah. <clears throat> oh man, it's been brutal for Notre Dame. This game. <laughs> it has. Brutal. They have Alabama Huntsville. Yep. Back inside the Compton Family Ice Arena, Bowling Green with a 5-1 to one lead over Notre Dame. And we take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Falcons. They'll finish up the home-and-home home against Notre Dame, then take on Alabama Huntsville and at Lake Superior State in WCHA play. Then Miami, Ohio, the rematch against Coach Bergeron on December 30th. I'm sure both coaches have that one circled. Absolutely, they had the season opener circled and they'll make some adjustments. They know, obviously know each other very well, so it'll be interesting to see how that chess match goes, but Bowling Green has five of its next six at home. I don't know if they want to go home, though. They've been so good on the road, five and one, and on their way to six and one. And on their way to being the first team to win in this building this season and the first team since last March. Notre Dame had won 10 straight home games before tonight. Here's Cruz. He has two points on the night. Plays it back. Theo Cherdis, his shot goes wide. Well, Coach Ty Eigner said before this game, he didn't need the Newt Rockney speech to get his boys ready for this one. And that's certainly been the case tonight. They came out with some juice. They really did. I mean, I, I'd be interested to, to hear what Eigner said in that pregame. He didn't need the Newt Rockney pump up speech, but still, I'm sure he got the boys fired up for Bowling Green. They knew the, the implications for this one nationally coming in against a prestigious program like Notre Dame, who's been so good at home. They needed to play great tonight to win. And I think that Eichner's going to add this game to that list of four, five, six so far this season, where he said he's been 100% happy. I can't imagine he'd be too upset after this one. Well, this is a team that already has a win over Minnesota State, the number one team in the country 
in conference play, but now to get a win like this in the non-conference, especially on the road, when you get too late in the season and they're trying to pick teams to make the NCAA tournament, these are the kind of games that they're going to circle and say, hey, they went into Compton Family Ice Arena and beat a Notre Dame team that hadn't lost at home all season. It definitely helps out their resume, and especially for a team that is on the rise, they'll, they'll notice, okay, they're starting to win these big time games now. And that's in the back of the minds of, of the selection committee. And Bowling Green will start to get the benefit of the doubt in some close calls if they continue to win games like these. Well, last year, this Bowling Green team fell in the first round to Minnesota Duluth in overtime, the eventual national champions. These two teams lost in the NCAA tournament to the two teams that ended up facing off in the national championship game in Minnesota, Duluth, and UMass. And both programs are, are right up there. They're among the best, and that's the great thing about the tournament that we were talking about earlier. Once you get in, anything can happen, no matter what seed you are. And you just have to imagine that both of these teams will be there come tournament time. Early on the season, both teams looking like teams that will make it into the NCAA tournament and be playing important hockey games in the month of April. St. John, a delayed penalty. And Notre Dame will have a chance on the power play here. So we take another look at this. So St. John coming in, just reaches his stick out and get, gets a clear trip right there. So again, Notre Dame back to the power play. Their first, fantastic. Second one, a little bit disjointed. Let's see if Notre Dame can find its power play rhythm once again here and carry that in to the rest of this match and then the match against Bowling Green tomorrow. Six and a half minutes to play. Bowling Green with the five to one lead. And in this case, extremely unlikely that Notre Dame is going to be able to come back and win this game. But if they're able to score a goal here, maybe another goal and make it five three, perhaps they can carry that into tomorrow night. Yeah, definitely. It's all about momentum, finding an offensive rhythm, which Notre Dame has not tonight. Players remember how they felt when they scored a goal most recently, and they're trying to make that memory more recent. O'Leary was looking out in front for Morrison. He's screening Dopp once again. Here comes Barber. Soft shot stopped by Bischel. Lieberman across the blue line, O'Leary. Dumps down to Tyson, who plays it around the boards for Cam Morrison. Lieberman working at the point. Over for Burke near the faceoff dot. One-timer from Lieberman is blocked. Just over a minute left on this power play for Notre Dame. Played around the boards by Tyson. Burke backhands it forward for Morrison. Now it's deflected back into the neutral zone. Bowling Green will quickly change. Alex Steves trying to gain possession in the corner. Back for Stastny. Stastny at the point. Less than 30 seconds on the power play for Notre Dame. Stastny with a shot. Stopped by Dopp. Alex Steves was right in the area for Notre Dame. But once again, Dopp comes up with the save. Dopp's just been aware tonight. He's seen the puck beautifully. And he just pounces right on top of it with Steve there. There have not been great rebound opportunities tonight for Notre Dame. Dopp has been doing a great job 
of cleaning up the mess, making sure if he makes a save that there's not going to be another chance for Notre Dame. And that's so important for a goalie to, to clean up those shots and eliminate rebounds because a lot of the best chances come off the rebounds. Here's Stastny. Out into the slot, a shot from Pavanka, and he scores. Notre Dame with their second power play goal of the night. And Notre Dame is back within three. Four thirty-one remaining, maybe a little bit too late for Notre Dame, but nonetheless, another power play goal. They continue to be dynamite on the power play. Pavanka, right side, just waiting for it. Stastny's pass wiggles its way through. He's set up. All he has to do is pull the trigger. Maybe that's the momentum that Notre Dame meet needs, not necessarily for the rest of this game, but moving into the game against Bowling Green on the road tomorrow. Fourth goal of the season for Jake Pavanka, the sophomore out of Woodridge, Illinois. Bauhauser with a shot deflected wide. Now Cam Burke bringing it out of the defensive zone for Notre Dame. Under four minutes to play in this one. Here's Charlie Wraith. Down the ice, no icing. Wraith going for the, the stretch pass to O'Leary coming down center ice. But O'Leary fell down and Wraith's pass just too far out in front. Ford in behind, back to the point. Justin Wells plays it back around the boards. Down in behind the net. Cal Burke bringing it through the neutral zone. Stastny keeps it in for Notre Dame. Here's Clerman back for Stastny. Over the blue line with just over two minutes to play in this game. These teams will face off again tomorrow night. Bowling Green hoping for a sweep. Notre Dame hoping for a much different result on the road tomorrow. Ford in behind the net for Rauhauser. And we'll take this time to thank our crew for working on this day after Thanksgiving. The cameras tonight, Brian Hames, Kyle Arnett, Drew Qualiter, Connor Fitzgerald, Phil Mark, graphics by Ben Earhart and Johnny McDermott. Tape by Jasmine Curry and Bobby Mummery. Audio from Steve D'Ambrosia. Engineering by Aaron Creasy, Sean Deward, Patrick Kelly. Technical director, Rick Harms. Director, Derek Coleman. Producer, Brock Rahm. And Rick Harmon is the technical director, also timeout coordinator, Kara O'Leary. It's during the holidays, obviously, with Thanksgiving, and we want to make sure that uh, we thank everyone on our crew for doing an outstanding job tonight. Yeah, they, they've done fantastic here in this hockey game and also in the volleyball match earlier. Just outstanding work. They make us look and sound good, that's for sure. And the holiday season, there's you, you think about the players as well. Many of them have to give up time that they could have at home. So 
Thank you to everyone for working so hard tonight on this broadcast and also of course to the players on the ice who often have to give up some of those opportunities to get a chance to go home. Final 30 seconds of this one. Bowling Green coming away with a huge victory on the road before the second game of this series at Bowling Green tomorrow night. Final seconds winding down and Bowling Green closes out a 5-2 victory over Notre Dame on the road. What a performance by this team, a dominant second period, and they finish off a 5-2 victory. Jack, your final thoughts on this one. Bowling Green was aggressive. They were physical. They took it to the Irish from the get-go. Notre Dame had a response, but Bowling Green had another response, dominated the second period, completely changed this game. A great performance from Bowling Green on the offensive and defensive end. So for our entire crew, I'm Connor Klingen along with Jack Kaiser saying so long from Compton Family Ice Arena where the final score is the Bowling Green Falcons 5 and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish 2.